Since the trilogy launched, Edward Gaunt and his team had to damage control with all their might. Which changes they were forced to make and who the mysterious shadow team behind Edward is, you will find out in today's episode. Edward's story sounds plausible until you scratch the surface, look at the practicalities, the sleight of hand, then it has less of a ring of truth to it. And the more you dig, the more you go down the rabbit hole of donations. Edward Gaunt! Edward Gaunt! Edward Gaunt is here! Mr. Gaunt, you are wanted! Yeah. W w why do you call a cafe your cafe non-profit when it's a limited company? Non-profit when it's a limited company. Notice, the question is, why do you call your cafe non-profit? when it is a limited company. Do you know what that clearly makes is? profit. So it means you take profit. No, so to get a, com many so to get a commercial company. lease for yeah. a restaurant, which is of course what we are, yeah. you should operate as a limited company with a shares shareholder by guarantee, right? Edward dilutes the question. Nobody asked, how do you get a lease? The question is, why do you claim non-profit when it isn't? Edward does not deliver any evidence on if his profit is going to an existing charity. Yeah, so that's what you we have do. To. You can't open a... To get a lease, to get a commercial lease the really? way you do. And you also know that you have to file. You can't open it as a charity. No, well, you can't register yeah. a restaurant as a charity, can you? Yeah. Can you? I'm not. Correct, Ed. You can't open up a restaurant as a charity. You claim non-profit, which Unity Diner is not. The alleged charity is supposed to be Search, which has never been registered as a legal entity or a charity for the past three years. You always think maybe a non-profit place. You always think maybe a non-profit place. We started Unity Diner as hopefully a means of being able to provide some sort of financial income for Surge, which is an animal rights group that I um, direct here in London with Luna. You're connected. There's a video on that. Go to Bobby's Perspective. Oh, Bobby's Perspective. Yeah. Surge's charity application has been declined by the UK Charity Commission. Surge has been declined charity status. No surprise there. Edward Gaunt and Lorna Note had over three years to register Surge as a charity. They never bothered to do anything about it. Surge was simply a website. Once they got exposed through the mysterious case of Earthling Ed, they had no choice but to make changes fast. The first episode aired on the 5th of July 2019. The last installment premiered on the 15th of July 2019. Even though they have already have been declined charity status, they managed to obtain the status of Community Interest Company. Edward registered as CIC on the 26th July 2019. How convenient, right after my videos. The registration time takes no more than two weeks. They had all the time in the world to do it, but didn't. You can clearly see that no efforts whatsoever have been done to register Surge as a company before that date. No entries, no history, nothing. Surge was not a company or a charity before the mysterious case of Earthling Ed. Surge was merely a mirage, a website that fronted as a legitimate animal rights activist organization. None of the donations can be traced. No transparency over what the money was used for. Curiously enough, this time Edward Gaunt single-handedly is the owner and the director of Search. Lorna Note has been excluded. All of this happened after they allegedly applied for charity status. If they've ever made the attempt of being a charity, we cannot know. However, let's entertain the idea that they've been truly declined for a minute. There are many reasons why they could be declined charity status. False names. Edward Gaunt has not changed his name on the search website. 
it still says Ed Winters. To even register with the charity commission, which you have to do prior to applying to be a registered charity with a charity number, you need charity trustees, who like company directors, have to use their real name. Search is just a website. The charity commission would take one look at what they are doing and instantly disqualify them. Traceability of donations. They are fundraising online, but are not registered with the UK fundraising regulator. They are not using any regulated online fundraising platform like Just Giving, GoFundMe, etc. Do they look like they remotely comply with the fundraising code of practice? The basic underpinning legal must is that donations made for a cause must be used for that cause. That legality applies to any organization fundraising regardless of them being a charity or not. Another reason could be that they are seen to be doing the same work as an existing charity. On the UK government homepage you can see that Animal Welfare and PETA UK are a registered charity. One reason an organization can be turned down is if they are seen to be doing the same work as an existing charity. In cases like that, they suggest joining forces with that charity. Well, that would never work for Edward Gaunt and Lorna Note. They couldn't pocket the donations. Shares and shareholders. Charities do not have shares or shareholders. Let's take a closer look at the mystery team behind Edward Gaunt. No sign of good administration or a properly structured organization on the search website. There is not even a phone number or head office. There is just a big list of projects to donate to, but no information about who's running those projects. They're just two people, Ed and his girlfriend. On the company's house website, we find the following names. Edward Gaunt, Lorna Note, Kirsty Adams and Christian Honor. Who is Christian Honor? As you can see in this article, he's a former Gordon Ramsay chef. He set up a restaurant at 5 Hoxton Market in 2016. It's the exact same address as Unity Diner. He's a top chef, received great reviews from the top London food critics. His Hoxton restaurant was still open in 2017. Work started on Unity Diner in 2018. So why is he connected to Unity Diner? Unity Diner is not just at his former restaurant address. He is connected to the company. Christian Honor still has his other restaurant in North London, which is not vegan. A chef that serves animal and dairy foods in his other restaurant is not going to be an advocate of animal activism. It would not tie in with Ed's story about an individual approaching him because he'd seen the work he was doing with search and wanted to help. It would also mean ethical Ed was happy to take money, courtesy of the meat and dairy industry. Particularly for Ed who boycotted restaurants that serve meat and raided farms himself. We can directly link him to Unity Diner as he is in shared documents for Twigs and Grass. Christian Honor prepares food for the prestigious Maswell Hill Synagogue. Mysteriously, they decided to delete all articles. His restaurant is located right next to it. Here he is with Camilla Duchess of Cornwall. No doubt, they are very powerful people behind Edward Gaunt. I do not want to bash Christian Honor. He has done nothing wrong. 
You don't have to be a vegan to invest in a vegan restaurant. Edward Gaunt, on the other hand, is not innocent. I was approached by an individual who had seen the work that I had done through Surge and the work that we had done through Surge and he said that he wanted to help us and he saw a lot of potential in what we were doing and he thought that what we were doing was effective and had a lot of potential for the future so he said that he wanted to help us but in particular he wanted to help us get to a point where we could be financially sustainable. More hero building for him. He even avoids using the word investor. He says this individual wanted to get them to a point where they would be financially sustainable. Second shareholder, Kirsty Adams. As we know, Kirsty Adams is the biggest single shareholder, which entitles her to the biggest dividend. You'd think Kirsty would want people to know about her involvement with Unity Dino, but clearly she doesn't. She was not involved in any of the press and publicity about it. Both Unity Diner and Earthling Ed follow her on Instagram. Not that you'll ever see them comment on her posts. Considering Ed's image, Kirsty doesn't strike you as someone he would do business with. If you scroll down her Instagram page, you will see her at Unity Diner wearing one of their t-shirts. Andrew Crumpton Andrew Crumpton, a successful real estate and letting company owner, he was involved in the initial setup of Twix and Grass as a director. He was never a shareholder. Then Mr. Crumpton resigned as a director. He was also involved in purely superfoods, which was dissolved on the 26th of March 2019. A previous company he and Kirsty Adams owned. We can directly link them together. What their relationship is stays a mystery for now. When they set up the company, if they wanted all profits to go to search, they would have found out the most efficient way of doing that. That would not be by taking dividends, which they will get as shareholders. Because if the dividend is over £2,000, you pay tax on it. Plus, you have to add it to all your other taxable income, pushing you into the higher rate tax of over 32% or even over 38%. Anyone can see that would be ludicrous. You'd be hit with a higher tax on your own personal income None of those three shareholders have wavered their rights to dividends. Had they ever intended profits to go to Search, they would have registered Search as a charity, then set up Twix and Grass as a subsidiary trading company for the charity. They could still have set it up as a limited company with shares, but all the shares would be owned by the charity and not by individuals. No further shares would be issued or transferred without the consent of the charity. Not only have they had over a year to do this, plus all the time the refurb work was going on, there is nothing in the company's article and memorandum that makes any mention of search any plans to donate profits to search, any plans to transfer all the shares to a charity at a later date. The articles are a governing document that outlines the purpose of a company. Unity Diner is not entitled to use the term not-for-profit, let alone use that term as its key selling, marketing and PR hook. Key aspects to non-profits are accountability, trustworthiness, honesty and openness to every person who has invested time, money and faith into the organization. Charity fraud. Charity fraud is the act of using deception to get money from people 
who believe they are making donations to charities. Often a person or a group of people will make material representations that they are a charity or part of a charity and ask prospective donors for contributions to the non-existent charity. Charity fraud not only includes fictitious charities but also deceitful business acts. Deceitful business acts include business accepting donations and not using the money for its intended purpose. To think one diner could fund an animal sanctuary is either incredibly naive or just being used as a soundbite. It's hugely expensive to open a sanctuary, buying land, deciding on the type of animals the sanctuary will have. Many animals are very expensive to look after. Medical bills, vet bills and staffing for the sanctuary. It's a 24 hour, 7 days a week, 365 days a year commitment. Until you have a clear business plan in place, the type of animals you'd be rescuing, the breakdown of costs, a target figure of what you need to raise, you should not be asking for donations. Without a good business plan, it's just a pipe dream and you'd be asking donors <laughs> to finance your lack of business knowledge. They may not want to donate to the type of animals you're going to rescue. So you can't just give a blanket term of animal sanctuary, especially as not all sanctuaries have a no-kill policy. What is Christian Honor's interest in the company? Why is he involved? Why is Ed so keen to keep shareholders in the background? On what basis are they even claiming it's not for profit? Why is he not responding to donors' questions and concerns? If he truly tried to register search as a charity, when did he apply? What sort of sanctuary is he planning to open? Do not question Edward. If you have any concerns or questions, just post a comment on his social media. It will promptly be deleted or ignored. If you want to send him a private Facebook message, you will get an automated response and a link to the donate button. If you want to call CERT's head office, there is no head office or telephone number. Edward Gaunt has created a religious following around his earthling ad persona. He depicts himself as the vegan Jesus and his disciples follow him blindly. To join his cult you will have to obey by his commandments. You must not know his real name. You must not know how much he receives in donations. You must not ask what he does with those donations. You shall not know who his investor is. You do not need to know if he uses a supplier that makes millions of pounds from animal slaughter. <laughs> he will front it out for as long as he can make money. He will front it out to the bitter end. And it will be a bitter end. Because when people finally stop supporting him, he will be nowhere to be seen, nor will their money. He is not faced by the allegations or remotely upset, because they are true. An honest person would address them, would speak to their followers and donors. Do people seriously think he even deals with his own social media platforms? You will never see him engage personally. You don't get to communicate with him. You're dealing with a faceless PR machine. You still have doubts? Good. Go ahead and email at about these issues. Let's see 
if we can find one single person that gets a response. They fooled a lot of vegans, but they can't fool the Charity Commission, as they are a public sector organization defined by rules and legalities. A picture of Earthling Ed kissing a pig is not a character reference in their rulebook. Vegans need to put their emotions to the side and look at the hard evidence. They know how animal lovers will react to animal photos on their website. The first thing you see on their landing page is end all animal oppression. Their supporters have already bought into saintly ad. They don't need much persuasion. All the emotional triggers are in place. When people are emotionally charged, they are far less likely to notice that it doesn't remotely look like a legitimate donation platform. Deceit, dishonesty, non-compliance with legalities, misrepresentation will all disqualify you from being a charity trustee. This message is for all the Earthling Ad and Search supporters. Ask Edward and Lorna why search has been declined. Ask them for proof that they even have applied. What is their end goal?